In the first year of dentistry, the number one thing I struggled with was writing answers in theory exams. I didn't know that it was a skill that I needed to develop. You can study, study and study some more, to read all of the textbooks. Yet, if you don't know how to present it in the right way, all of your efforts will go in vain. So in this video, we will understand how to write essay answers in a way that will give us an excellent score. Number one tip is presentation. In order to get your presentation right, you have to plan your answer before you begin writing. So make a rough outline in your mind or on the paper using a pencil. Let's see how to create this outline. Your answer should have four parts. An introduction to the topic, main answer, diagrams or flowcharts. They are to be included in the main answer and not separately after the main answer. The fourth part is recent advances or relevant studies. This is not mandatory for you if you are an undergraduate, but I think it's very good for getting some extra marks and to stand out among other students. Also, it will get you into the habit of reading scientific articles. Now, how do you come up with an introduction? The easiest way to do this is to prepare an introduction beforehand so that when you see the question, you can immediately start writing. I don't mean to say that you need to mug it up, but you can pick a broad category, for example, temporomandibular joint disorders or pre-prosthetic surgery and formulate an introduction that you can write in any question that is asked regarding these topics. Remember to pick a broad category of topics and apply the introduction like a template to any question on that topic. Again, remember you don't have to mug it up word for word. You just have to keep the main points in mind and keep your introduction within four to five lines. After the brief introduction, let's come to the main answer. It's very important to read the question very carefully. Let's take an example. Enumerate the hormones secreted by anterior pituitary gland. Describe the action of growth hormone. You must know the meaning of these terms. They are not asking you to write in detail about all of the hormones secreted by pituitary gland. You just have to write the names of all of them and then write in detail about the growth hormone only. So always read what is exactly asked in the question and stay on topic. You might have heard from people that you just need to fill out pages but that is not the ideal way if you want to score well. Don't think that the professors don't read what you write. If you write something that is completely wrong, you might lose marks. Divide your answer into multiple paragraphs instead of cramming everything in one paragraph. And underline the crucial keywords and definitions. For headings, you can use block letters. If you write the answer in this way, it will be very easy for them to check if you have included everything and give you better scores. Nothing adds more beauty to an answer than diagrams and flowcharts. And I cannot stress this point enough. Diagrams and flowcharts are like score magnets. If you draw a neat, well-labeled diagram, it immediately conveys that you know your stuff well. You might say, I'm not an artist type, I can't draw well. Well, it doesn't matter at all. Anyone can draw good diagrams with a bit of practice. Consider this an investment which will pay huge dividends. Because learning the diagrams is like a cheat sheet. When you learn to draw a diagram, it will also help you remember what to write about the answer. So set aside a specific time during your preparation for just diagrams. Pro tip, create an Instagram account for uploading your hand-drawn diagrams so that you can easily refer to all of them in one place and you are sure to get a number of followers. So a win-win situation, right? Now when to use flowcharts? So let's say you need to explain a procedure, for example, techniques of obturation. So create a flowchart showing the procedure instead of writing a long paragraph about it. Here is an example of how you can turn a procedure into a flowchart. Writing long answers takes a lot of time, so this practice saves your time as well. Lastly, include recent advances or relevant studies that support your answer. This is not as difficult as it sounds. As you did for the introduction part, we are going to create a template for this as well that can be applied to any answer. Write down one or two recent advances for each major topic. How to search for these? There are sites like Science Direct or Google Scholar. Now I know that most of the articles are paid, but there are two ways to access them. You can go to the library and get institutional access for Science Direct from the librarian. This way you can access any article you need. The second way is to go to Sci-Hub and copy the URL of the article that you want and paste it there. 
it will open most of the articles easily if not all articles don't just help with recent advances but they also help you in the main answer because there are certain articles called as review articles these articles are basically a summary of multiple articles written on the topic so in one article you are getting the meat of many articles then there are research articles these articles are based on original research they can be used for writing recent advances to save time you don't have to read the full article just read the introduction discussion and conclusion and you will get an idea whether you can use this in your answer now it sounds like a lot of work but once you start doing it it will develop your interest in the subject and it will also help you become familiar with research terminology and will keep you updated with the new research in dentistry pro tip if you have friends who can collaborate with you you can prepare the recent advances together to save most of your time an important part of theory exams is time management sometimes we lose track of time so set aside a specific time for each question and at least 30 minutes towards the end for reviewing all of your answers and completing any unfinished ones lastly check if you have missed anything let me tell you a personal story in the last 15 minutes of my pedodontics theory exam i realized that i had completely missed answering two questions from the short answer question section i know silly me right but i swear i missed reading these two questions completely it was the 8th and the last exam so i think the stress and lack of good sleep over the last 7 days might have resulted in a mental fog my point is be alert to this possibility and check at least one hour before the exam ends if you have missed any of the questions so guys i hope you will apply these tips and create beautiful essay answers i'll be back with more videos in this series let me know if you like this video and share it with your friends see you very soon bye